Okay, this is part B on our uh, lectures on production possibilities, frontiers, and how they inform us about opportunity costs. And we just completed this table where we were looking at these different production possibilities and calculating the opportunity cost of moving from one point to another. And so when you make a decision to change your production strategy and produce more of one thing and less of another, in order to see if that choice, if that decision is a good idea, you have to know the cost. How many berries, in this case, am I giving up in order to get each fish? And if you're giving up more berries than it's worth to you to get another fish, then you need to back up and head in the other direction. So, again, for example, just to pick one of these uh, numbers here, between point C and D, now let's look at our graph here. Between point C and D, we calculated the, that the opportunity cost is one berry per fish. So let's, let's look at this graphically. So um, between, I'm going to have to zoom out a little more here, between C and D, let me label point C, at point C, we are getting 33 berries and 7.5 and fish. When we move to point D, we are getting 30 berries and 10.5 and fish. So when we make that decision to go from point C to point D, we are going down 3, down 1, 2, 3, because we're losing 3 berries, and over 3, 1, 2, 3, because we're getting 3 more fish. So for every berry we give up of those three, we're getting one more fish. Now, another way to, to see what's going on and think about what's going on in this drawing is to think about the slope. Now, remember that slope is rise over run. And when you think about rise over run, between C and D. The rise between C and D is you're going down 3 and so that rise is actually a minus 3 and that minus 3 represents the 3 berries that you're giving up. So the rise minus 3 divided by the run is positive 3. 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis. And so the rise is minus 3, the run is 3, and that equals 1, which is the same as the opportunity cost that we were just calculating. Now, what's happening to this slope? So this opportunity cost of how many berries does it cost per fish we get is just the slope between each pair of points. Between A and B, the slope was 0.25. You can see that this is a small slope. It's actually negative 0.25 because um, we're losing those berries. But here it's 0.25, not a very steep slope. And then between B and C, 0.57, a little bit steeper. C and D, it's 1, a little steeper. And between D and E, it's 1.6, 2.5, 4, 7, and 16. The slope is getting steeper and steeper as we go from the left to the right. What this is telling us is that to get each additional fish as we go along the x-axis, each additional fish is a little more expensive, a little more expensive, a little more expensive. We have to give up more and more berries to get each additional fish. Why might that be? This is normally what we see and it's represented keep this in mind, it's represented by the fact that this shape starts out flat and gets steeper and steeper and steeper. That shape, sometimes we say this shape is bowed out away from the origin. Bowed out, not flat, but like a bow away from the origin. When you stretch that figure out away from the origin, it makes it flatter on the top and steeper on the bottom. Now, why would that happen? And this is normally what we see with most real-world production possibilities frontiers. It's not always the case, but this is normally what we see. The reason is because there are different resources that are used to make these two different 
products, these two different goods. And so think about on this island, rather than just one person, we had a village of people. Some people are really good at climbing trees and really good at picking fruit. Some people, on the other hand, are very good at fishing. They're good swimmers. Uh, they're good with a spear, or they just know how to find the locations where the fish are in the lakes and in the ocean. So with these people, let's, let's imagine we're starting out at point A. Everyone is picking fruit. Everyone is picking fruit. Even some people who aren't very good at picking fruit. But the whole village goes out one day and picks fruit. What happens? Well, on that day, everyone picks fruit and we end up with 36 pounds of fruit. What's going to happen if we decide to make another decision, a different decision tomorrow, and move to point B? If we move to point B, think carefully. Which of the villagers are we going to send and say, you know, you shouldn't pick fruit today. You should go fish. Who are we going to send? Well, we're going to send the people who are the best fishermen. And maybe the people who are also the worst at picking berries. So the, we're going to send the best swimmers, the people who are most talented with a spear or with a fishing pole. We're going to send them to fish. So what's going to happen when we move from point A to point B? We're just sending the two or three villagers who are the best fishermen. Well, if we send them we're not going to lose very much in terms of berries. We might lose one pound of berries, because these guys weren't great at picking berries, but they're great fishermen. We're not going to lose a lot of berries, but we do get a lot of fish. We get four pounds of fish from just sending those two guys out there. Now, the next day, we, we're thinking about making a different decision. People liked those fish. So, well, what, what would happen if we wanted more fish? How many berries do we have to give up? We're already sending the two best fishermen. Now we're going to have to send some more people away from picking berries and towards catching the fish. And so what might happen when we send more people? Let's look at back at our table. When we move from to these different points and we send two more people, two more people, two more people, we're getting less and less fish each time, less additional fish and we're giving up more fruit each time. Instead of losing one pound of fruit, we're losing two pounds of fruit. Now why is that? Well, because when we move to point C, we're sending villagers that are not the best um, fruit pick, not the best fishermen anymore, sorry, but these are probably people who are pretty, pretty decent fishermen, but maybe pretty decent at picking fruit as well. And as we keep moving along, because people have different skills and abilities, we're going to be sending people who are worse and worse at catching fish. And our best berry pickers, at some point, are going to be fishing instead. So let's look at this last movement between point G, sorry, H and I here. When we move from point H to I, what we're doing is we're moving from a point where we were getting, let's move this over here so we can see, where we were getting eight berries to a point where we're getting no berries. So here we're getting eight, here we're getting none. Why? Because we're sending the last people we had picking berries, who were the best berry pickers. And we're not getting more, a lot more fish. Why? Well, because these people who are the best at berry picking um, are probably not going to be the best at fishing. So we're losing all of those berries by taking all of our taking our last two best berry pickers and switching them to fishing. We're not going to get a lot more fish, but we're giving up a lot of berries. So this shape, where the slope gets steeper and steeper, comes from the fact that people have different skills factories have different types of machinery in them and as you switch from one type of production more and more intensely into another some of the people and some of the resources are going to be less and less appropriate at that kind of activity so a very common question on economics quizzes and tests is why do production possibilities 
bow out away from the origin. Why does that slope get steeper and steeper? The answer, because resources are specialized. Resources are not equally good at doing everything. And the last thing I wanted to mention about this that's an important metaphor for uh, the real world is let's look back at this unattainable point. This point that's unattainable now. How could we attain that production level later? We can't do it now. On our island, one way we might do that is to get more labor, more villagers, or train our villagers better, get them in education or get them physical training, training in fishing, training in fruit picking. That's a way that we could do it. So getting more talented labor or more tools. Uh, we could get nets to catch the fish. We could get ladders to pick the berries. This is a way so that even though now we can't attain uh, that level of production, in the future maybe we can. And so if you have more labor, more resources, uh, or better labor, that can shift that production possibilities frontier out in the future. Now the same can also be true. If you let your labor uh, languish, if you let your labor uh, not get an education, or if you have a national disaster and you have less labor, less machinery, less technology, then in the future you could actually have your production possibilities shrink and in the future your nation or your village will get poorer and poorer. And so these are some of the most important lessons that we want you to learn as an introductory model about how economists think and one of the most important things here is that if you're being efficient especially in order to get something, get more fish for example, you have to give up something else and in this case berries. And so we also talked about how to calculate not just the idea that you have to give something up but how much do you have to give up for each unit that you get. And we calculated that as the opportunity cost per unit. So that, how many berries per fish do we have to give up? And so in the next lectures, we're going to move on to looking at supply and demand.